Well, the clouds have rolled in, so that must mean new Astro equipment has arrived. Okay, well, this is part two of a video that I did sometime earlier where I updated, uh, began updating my imaging train. I got uh, replaced my LRGB one and a quarter inch filters with two inch Antlia filters and uh, attached to the two inch seven position uh, ZWO electronic fil filter wheel and then was connecting my existing 294mm camera uh, to that. So now we're ready for part two. I have uh, obtained my 2600mm Pro camera and I have my new Antlia 2 inch 3 nanometer uh, narrowband filters. So we will re be replacing the uh, one and a quarter inch filters with the uh, two inch filters and then putting the new 2600mm Pro camera on the, uh, on the imaging train. Uh, it is cloudy now and is forecast to be cloudy for the next several days. So we'll do this and then later on we'll actually go out into the observatory um, do my filter offset calculations and get first light on the new system. So let's get started in disassembly here. up to 294 and set it out of the way and then we have to disassemble the rotator off of the filter wheel and we will set that out of the way and now we can begin disassembling the filter wheel to take the filters out Right. <clears throat> All right, get my gloves on here before I start dealing with the filters. So we're going to take each of these out. If you remember, I had these one and a quarter to two inch adapters uh, from ZWO that allowed me to uh, utilize these filters that I had until I could get the newer filters. And Antlia always does such a wonderful job of packing up their filters. Uh, they are in these nice cases, magnet tops. Very, very well made, very, very nicely made. And this is our oxygen three. So I normally put uh, my filters in uh, LRGB and then SHO. So my oxygen filter will go in port seven. fine thread so we want to thread them in and not cross thread anything 
that nice and snug. Move on to our next filter here. Now, I always wear these uh, gloves when I'm working my filters. Um, they're going to get dust and we'll clean that up, but this way at least I don't get any oil from my fingers uh, on the glass of the filter. And then lastly, we will get the O3 filter installed. Now, because I have to connect the camera and it connects to the back of the filter wheel, I have to take this tilt plate off, which was required for the 294 camera in order to attach it to this filter wheel. And in order to get to those screws, I have to remove the carriage from the, um, from the filter wheel. And we're going to do that by removing these small screws. the filter carriage. We'll lay it out of the way so that we can now remove these screws. Darkening ring. And there we go. Okay, in order to connect to the filter wheel, we have to first remove the tilt plate from the, uh, from the camera. So we will do that. Okay. Now then, we will be able to connect the filter wheel to the camera. using the screws that came with the, uh, with the filter wheel. All right, so now the camera is nicely connected to, directly to the filter wheel. And we can put the filters back. But first we want to clean everything up here a little bit. Make sure that we don't have any dust. Okay. Now we can put our filter carriage back in. And before I do that, I am going to put my gloves back on just to make sure that we don't get any finger smudges. And once again, while I've got everything out and accessible,
Well, of course, uh, as always, something has to happen. Uh, my camera batteries died, but I do have everything reassembled. Um, got the camera attached, uh, got the filters back in, filter wheel all reassembled, and now we will reattach the rotator to the uh, assembly here, along with the, the uh, field flattener. tight and there we go so now we can go back out um, get it attached to the telescope and uh, once the hurricane that is currently in the Gulf that looks like it's coming this way into Kentucky which is highly unusual once that passes and the clouds break which is probably going to be another four or five days um, then we'll uh, go through the process of calibrating uh, focus on the new filters and uh, getting first light. So we'll be back. Okay, so now we're connected to the computer out in the observatory. We're in Nina. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a test shot on the luminance filter so we can see about where we are setting with focus. So the first test shot coming in here and we are severely out of focus. So I will manually move the focuser and we'll just take a shot in the dark here, move it one direction, and then take another test shot. And we'll see what this shot looks like. And it is slightly better. So it looks like we're moving in the right direction. We're still quite a ways out of focus. So I will move it in quite a bit here. And then we will take another test shot. our test shot and we'll see how close we are. I want to get fairly close to focus here and uh, see what we've gotten. And this image comes in and that's pretty daggone close. So at this point I'm going to run just a standard autofocus manually so that we get uh, the luminance filter in focus. Uh, speed this up here a little bit for you. it run through a uh, complete autofocus cycle. Okay, there comes our first point on the graph. Speed this up and let it run through the entire sequence here. Now our autofocus is done. Now I'm over in the Dark Archons um, plugin for Nina that does the filter offset calculations. So basically what's going to happen here is you turn on each of the filters and then it's going to run through a series of autofocus routines for each of the filters that you have selected. So I've got all of my filters selected uh, it's going to run through three times. I've found that to be sufficient um, for each of the filters. So obviously this is sped up, but it is then keeping track of the focus point for each of the filters as it goes through. And it also calculates in temperature variations throughout the process and so forth until it gets complete at... Um, once it's complete here, now we see it is calculated what the offsets are from each filter. I set the luminance filter as my base filter because that's going to be the quickest to focus. I tell it to use uh, those offsets and then to accept and it will store that information in the profile 
for each filter. So from this point forward, I've told Hocus Pocus, Hocus Focus, my, my focusing plug-in, to use offsets. So when I run a autofocus, it always goes back to luminance, and then each time it changes filters, it will move the focuser by that offset amount so that you don't have to autofocus between each filter. Here comes our first two minute sub of Monard 865 from the luminance filter. And at the end here, I'm going to show you the processed image. If you found this uh, helpful, I would appreciate you giving me a like. If you'd like to see more of this type of content, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.